Hey, it's Joe Klein, it's me, Automator. And the other day I saw this post on doing some Excel functions, and I thought I'd go ahead and demonstrate how to insert them without a hotkey into Excel and a little bit more about it. But let's jump into the code here. So right here, if you get my Excel function library, if you go here at the top of the page is the Excel function library. Uh, so you download that. This is just has like the single instance force and a hotkey to run this code. So right here, we're going to get a handle to Excel. So this is going to connect to this Excel workbook. And then this if, this just says, just run this code, right? It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just allowing me to compartmentalize my stuff because below here, I have some separate code that I want to demonstrate separately and I don't want it all running at the same time. So here we're going to say, look in cell H1, put the value to, to this, which is going to be the sum of A1 to F1. So the sum of A1 to F1, which apparently is 21, right? So when I run this, you're going to see 21 put into, where's that, H1. And then the next cell, we're going to take the average for that same range. And then the median, the count, we're going to round it, truncate it. So each of these things are going to do stuff here. This is this one's kind of interesting. It's going to insert um, today plus five days. So you'll know when I made this video. And the um, min and max, now this, it kind of threw me, this is actually what got me doing this video was, I saw this small and large. I'm like, why would I use small and large? I knew min and max was there. Well, this has an extra parameter. So if you want the first smallest or second smallest, uh, or first largest and second largest from the largest, right, you have an extra parameter so you can specify that. So I thought that's, you know, that's kind of handy. Um, and then I threw in just a couple more of trimming, giving the length of a string, concatenating, um, I somehow, I don't know, I skipped over a product, which was just multiplying and stuff. So let me save this. I'm going to launch it. I'm going to run it. Now that just dumped in all the stuff here. Now, this is really the cool part, right? If you look in here, I didn't store 21. I shoved in the formula, right? This means, of course, if later we come back and update the data, your values will change because we inserted the formulas. And this is a such an amazing way to do this. Of course, it's the power of Excel, but we could easily have calculated the values and shoved the values there. But then if your data changes, it's wrong, right? So inserting the formulas to me is a far better approach. And um, it's just a little weird because you have to put the equals and then equal sign sum, but basically almost any function built into Excel, this is how you do it, right? So I think that's pretty neat. However, what if you wanted to actually use this value, but you don't want to store it in your spreadsheet, right? So sometimes you might want to be able to use that in, in something else you're doing, but you don't want to have to store it and then get the value. So let me go ahead and again, I'm going to hit, I'm going to change this to a zero so it doesn't execute this part. And then we're going to magically, you know, let's add a few more returns here so I can scroll up to it better. We're going to turn this one onto a one. Now, again, this just says now do this bit of code instead of the other part. And here I have three message boxes. So this is pretty neat. This Worksheet function. We're still going to connect to the Excel worksheet and get it here. I'm sorry, that's actually up here. Um, I could bring it down there, but we get the Excel handle. Then we're going to call this worksheet function and we're going to call the sum function, right? Then you have to pass it, which is to me a little odd. Like I thought I could just use this, but I can't. I have to actually still tell it, hey, what are you going to calculate this on? And so this will, let me save it, reload it, and run it. So the um, sum of H1 to H, A1 to H3 is uh, 69.5. Uh, well, because I went all the way up to the 30. Okay. And the um, the next one, let's hit okay. The range is, or I'm sorry, the small is 2. And the large, I'm just doing examples here, right? But this is pretty neat because this way you don't have to insert that value into your worksheet. You can actually just use it as a variable. I could I could easily say var and that, and now I have that as a variable inside my Excel worksheet and I can use it. I don't have to, again, I don't have to save it somewhere. I can use it. Of course, if that number changes, I have to go pull it again because it's going to be dynamic, right? But it is a quick, easy way. And what's amazing is Excel probably has, I'm sure, like a thousand or more functions that you can use. So really, really powerful. Um, I think it's just awesome. I'm debating if I'm going to add some of these to my Excel function uh, worksheet, which is, uh, you know, it's the one where you can grab um, this function, 
but um, I don't think it makes sense to have one for each one of these. This is just a good, maybe I'll put this in there in the file, not as a function, but just as an example so people have it handy. I think that's probably the best approach because I don't think I'd want one for each one of these things because there's thousands of, of these things, right? There's so many functions. I don't want to have all those in there. It's more about the approach so you can understand how to adapt the approach and use it. So hope that helps. Uh, please, if you learned something here, like the video, it really helps me out. It gets a lot more views. It's really interesting how YouTube works. Um, we're the largest auto hockey channel out there and I consider the best. We're doing some amazing stuff. We publish usually twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Cheers.